This week, we'll find out if post-production is absolutely necessary. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Well, in this episode of Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, I know I'm going to stir up some debate on the comments on YouTube and other places because we're talking about a topic that has been debated for a long, long time, and that is, can you take a picture and get it right in camera? And so we've heard a lot of people uh, all over the place saying, you know, when you take a picture, get it right in camera, and you don't have to do anything in Photoshop or in post-production. And then other people that say, no, that's not right. You can't do it right in post-production. And this all started with a question that came from Al in Bismarck, North Dakota. And Al asked, is it possible to shoot something correctly in the camera with no post-production? Well, Al, my personal opinion is no. You cannot shoot something that is perfect in the camera. To get it perfect, you need to do some post-production, but you can get it pretty darn close. Now, to support my argument, I've done a bunch of testing and I wanna share that with you now. Well, let's put it to the test. And the way we can put it to the test is by gathering data. And so we're gonna do just that. And I've been gathering data over the past couple of days. I wanna show you my little lab that I've set up here in the studio. Now, before I start, let me mention that I have a, a couple of tools that are probably not readily available to everybody out there watching. One of them is this. This is a Seikonic color meter. This is the C500R Prodigy Color. And so this is a very expensive color meter for me to uh, actually measure the color temperature of specific lights. And then I have a really nice Seikonic uh, light meter here to make sure my exposures are spot on. So I'll be using both of these and already have during the data gathering. Also, I have used about 15 cameras. So there's a bunch of cameras right here. These aren't all of the cameras that we've been using, but I just wanna make sure you understand that we've tested Sony and Nikon and Canon and Fujifilm and all different brands of cameras. And we got the same results across the board. And the results were that technically speaking, you cannot get it right in camera. Now, how do we know that? Well, I have an exposure profile over here and a bunch of other things, and they're illuminated by these really tall lights right here. Now, these are just tungsten lights. They're 3,200 degrees Kelvin, and they're at a very high angle. The reason that they're at a high angle is I have this right here. This is called a black trap. And that uh, is just a box with a hole in it, and it allows me to make sure that the light coming in has a shadow. So the very back of this, it has a piece of velvet in there, black velvet. It will fall to completely black. So I know I have a black point there. I also have some other targets here. I have the Seikonic Exposure Profile target with black and white and shades of gray in between. I've got a digital calibration target with black, middle gray, and white. I also have my color checker passport with a bunch of different colors on it that I can measure to see exactly what's going on. So now that you know the setup, let's get testing. All right, before we begin, let me tell you the exact setup that I'm using. I've got a Nikon D3S and it's tethered to Lightroom 4. And the reason for that is I'm using this Nikon D3S over all the other cameras because it has the largest dynamic range of all the cameras that we have. So it'll be able to do, um, of all of the ones we have, the best job of capturing all the blacks and all the whites. Now I'm shooting right into Lightroom. I've got this tethered, so as we shoot, the pictures will come straight in and then we can actually analyze the shots and I can tell you some things about them. So the first thing I wanna do is I have my camera set to aperture priority mode. I have it at F11 and when I meter, it tells me that the shutter speed should be 20th of a second. So let me go ahead and take a shot and I'm doing this tethered. So it's gonna come right into Lightroom and then let's take a look at this shot. So I'm gonna go into the develop module and I'm gonna hide my tethering bar right here and we can see something here, and that is what's supposed to be white isn't white. If you take a look at this, you can see on the histogram here, we've got a lot of room on the right-hand side of this image. These whites aren't actually white. And so something wacky is happening here, and the internal meter should be working just right because we've got all kinds of grays and blacks and everything, but let's just check it. So I'm gonna take my light meter here, and I'm gonna go over, and I'm just gonna meter this right on this little uh, target right here. I'm gonna meter that, and it tells me at F11 that I need to be using uh, one-tenth of a second, one-tenth of a second. And so what I'll do here is I'm gonna change this to uh, manual mode, and I'm gonna set this to a tenth of a second at F11, okay? So that is one stop different between what we did. So uh, according to our light meter, we were underexposed by a stop. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to take another picture here 
And so I'm going to use my built-in tethering. So it comes in. We have a different shot here. Now take a look at this shot. I'll kick out the side panel here. Notice the difference between this shot, where the uh, histogram is, and the shot previous to that. You can clearly see that the first shot was underexposed. But look, we still don't have whites. We still have a gap there. Our whites aren't white. So I'm going to take one more shot. This time I'm going to push it one more stop. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to change our shutter speed to one fifth of a second. So I'm shooting one stop uh, slower of a shutter speed to get twice as much light. And so what I'll do is I'll go in here. I'm going to take another shot. You can hear that shutter is really, really slow. So that comes in, and as soon as it pops in, now you can see on our histogram, it's calculating. Look where the whites will show up. They're gonna be way over here on the right. That's exactly where we want them. And so here's the very first shot. See the whites are sort of middle gray, which is not right. The second shot with the external light meter, the whites are closer to where they should be, and then we're pushing it one more stop. You can see the whites are way over on the right-hand side. So we see we have exposure issues uh, sometimes, depending on what we're doing. But what we really want to do is we want to talk about where the blacks are and where the whites are in our image. And what we're going to do is we're going to go with the image that was in between. So not the one that's way exposed to the right, not the one that's way exposed to the left, but the one that's exposed in the middle. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open this in Adobe Camera Raw, and I'm shooting all these photos in Raw because I want to show you some of the things we can do in post-production. So uh, I'll open this up, and as soon as we're in Adobe Camera Raw, we'll take a closer look. Well, before we take a look at the photo in Adobe Camera Raw, I need to explain something really quickly. I'm going to be using a color sampler tool that allows me to put points on the photograph to measure the red, green, and blue values. And so that tells us about the color mix, but it also tells us about the brightness level. So a zero means absolutely black with no detail, and 255 means absolutely white with no detail. And so things that are black should measure about 10, about 10 on the scale of 0 to 255, and things that are white, absolutely white, should measure about 250. So let's take a closer look at where things are measuring up in our scale here. Now I'm going to grab my color sampler tool right here from the top of the uh, toolbar in Adobe Camera Raw, and I'm going to place a point right on the edge of this, because notice if I zoom in, the edge of this is darker than the actual black. So we have two different blacks there. And so I'll put a point right on the edge. And I'll put a point on the black. I'll put a point on the black here. So notice we have one, two, three. And up here we have one, two, and three. Now notice, one, the edge of this is at 13, which is just over where we really want black to be. Two, where we should have black, is at 20. And that is brighter than black. And then three, Again, it's about 20. And if we take a look over here at our black trap, check that out, absolutely zero. So that actually works. But where we want our blacks to be, we're not getting black. We're getting uh, dark gray, and so that's not good. Well, let's take a closer look at the whites. Now, whites, again, should measure about 250 or higher. So if we use our sampler tool, I'll put it on the white right here. Look at that, 199. That's not even close. On this white right here, we're getting uh, 208. So again, not really close. If we go on this white uh, paper right here, it's at 189. So we're not, our whites are not white. And so we have an issue here. Now what we can do though is remember we shot a photo where we had our whites much uh, higher exposure. And so maybe that one, everything would be right in camera. So let me load that one in and we'll show you what it looks like. Well, now I have that photo that we shot where we uh, overexposed um, intentionally, we overexposed, where we got our whites way to the right side of the scale. Now take a look at this color sampler when I uh, click on the white. Notice that's at 240, which is right where we want it to be, this white right here, 247. So it's almost at the, it's at the very, very edge of the spectrum. And then this, uh, this paper right here, it's at 235, 238 around there. So all of those are where we'd expect them to be, which is right at absolute white. But now look what happens to the blacks. If we go in here and I'm gonna clear these samplers out. Again, I'm gonna clear, uh, push one on the edge there. That's at 28, this black, 41, this black down here, 38. And then in our black trap, 
it's already starting to show at, at one. So it's even being pushed over. So we gained our whites, but we lost our blacks. So the point is, if you want to get uh, a really high contrast image where we have absolute black blacks and absolute white whites, you're just not going to get that in the camera. It won't work. You'll have to go into a tool and you're going to have to do some things. And let me just talk to you a little bit about what you should do. There's a technique called exposing to the right, and that's what we did on that third shot where we exposed where everything was pushed to the right side of the histogram that you can see right here. And this really allows us to do some things. Specifically, our whites are where they should be, but now what we want to do is we need to bring our blacks in. So I'm gonna click on this, and we can see our black is at 39. And if I go in here and I start making the blacks darker and darker and darker, so we get them down to around 10. Okay, there we go, they're at 10. And I'm gonna click on the white, the white's still at 240. So we have black and we have white with adjustments in post-production, and that works great. Well, let's try one other thing, and that is, can we, is it possible to get an exposure that is correct in the camera subjectively? In other words, we might not have our blacks all the way black, we might not have our whites all the way white, but it looks the way that we want it to look, because realistically, are we shooting patterns like this? Are we shooting calibration targets? Well, no, we're not shooting those types of things. We're shooting people and landscapes and all kinds of things. And so is it possible to get those subjectively to look the way we want, even though we know we're not going to get absolute black and absolute white because most photos don't have those extremes? And the answer is yes, you can get that. In fact, here's a photo that I shot, and you can see this is one of Michael. This was shot in camera, and you can, say, you can see it has beautiful values here. We have nice dark tones. We've got great skin color. We've got just a great exposure. The histogram looks as it should. And this is a JPEG image straight out of the camera. Now, if I had some whites in there, would they be absolutely white? Well, no. And is this black absolutely black? Well, yeah, it is. It might be a little underexposed, but it's the way I want it to look. And this was shot with a preset that I built in my Fuji, Fujifilm X-Pro1, a camera that does a great job of shooting images like this. But I wanted to see some other cameras, how they would look. And so I got a Canon 5D Mark II, and I shot this image. And this one is, again, right out of the camera, and it looks great. I'm going to zoom this in a little bit. Um, and this, uh, again, subjectively looks the way I think a photo should look. But I didn't want to leave it there. And I thought, well, what would happen if I took something that looked uh, correct or right in the camera, and I actually tweaked it in post-production to sweeten it up a little bit, making the shadows darker and bringing uh, some, some different details. And so I did that. I made about four adjustments to this image, and you can see that it really brings out this image. It's a huge difference just by changing the color temperature just slightly and uh, opening up the shadows, bringing in the darks. This is a much, much more pleasing image to me. So even though I got it correct in the camera and this looks good, to me, post-production is always going to be better because you can make it exactly how you want it to look. Well, okay, there you can see the photos speak for themselves. I personally think, and I'm gonna stand by it, that to get something that is absolutely perfect, that's gonna hang on a gallery wall, you've gotta do some post-production, but I'm also going to agree with people that say you can get it right in camera because for a lot of things, you don't need to tweak everything and get the blacks absolutely black and get all the highlights and color perfect. You can dial that in as closely as possible in your camera and get some great photos. So you're both right. You can get it right in camera and you do need post-production. Well, I hope that clears things up. Remember, if you have a question about photography like Al did, you can send it to me at askmart at adorama.com. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Well, let me show you how... So, Michael, can you... Uh... Dan, maybe you're over there. I'm just looking right at you. All I see is Michael in the back. Going. <laughs> it's hard to work in this environment. Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com.